Most people in life are looking for a way to make a life worth living or retirement worth having. But in reality, we have to think about what's going on for us. We also have to think about how it impacts other people. And when we do our work, we sometimes have to do it in a difficult way. In my life, I've had a lot of theft, a lot of hazing, a lot of harassment. And when I talk, I'm talking real softly because I'm in a public place that requires quietude. And that's okay. But in life, we have to keep going. We have to keep working. We have to keep striving. We have to keep going despite the obstacles that other human beings put in our place and put in before us. The reality is in my audio cast, Magic and Mayhem, I talk about the magic of God and the mayhem that other people cause in our lives who literally think they have rights to do so. Sometimes they do it in the name of God, which we all know is a lie, and it's the liars of the land that destroy America. We also know that there are liars out there who are from different lands, who come into our country with their own morals, their own values, their own society ethics and epithets and openly their own cultural codes of how they conduct themselves, which are totally not aligned with American laws. And that's a problem. You see, selfishness is what really harms other people's lives. And when we're selfless, we sometimes go further. In my life, I'm looking for opportunities. I'm looking for opportunities to strive. I'm looking for opportunities to succeed. And I'm probably no different than you. You too are looking for things that will help you to move your life forward. You're looking for how do I make a life worth living, meaning how do I have a good job with good people to work with and literally bring home the bacon, if you will, or fried up in a pan as the old commercials would tout. But the truth is, what we're really talking about is having resources to conduct our lives outside of our jobs, to be able to have enough money to clothe our family, to feed our family, to put roof and shelter overhead and then to have some money left over for ent entertainment, enjoyment, and fundraising efforts for philanthropic organizations, and openly for serving the Lord if we have a faith. When I talk like this, I'm talking about how it is to be real, how it is to be humble, and how it is to be knowing that God knows everyone's story, and literally so well that he actually has a book. In some faiths, it's called something different than in others, but in reality, most people know it as an Akshkaga record, which literally is the plan the Lord makes for our lives. Sometimes that record has to shift, and literally the lines in the sand start to change. There was a great film by Morgan Freeman where they kind of talked about knowing what was coming and how to prevent it, and hopefully they would then shift the lines in the inking machine or the sewing machines or the presses that they were using to find out what was going on. And in truth, we can sort of do that. But when we make may mayhem for other people's lives, we really harm them. And we really destroy our own life because the Lord watches us lie, watches us thieve, watches us steal, watches us see ourselves as superior, watches us pretend to be lords in other people's lives. And that's not what our role is. Our role is to love, honor, cherish, and believe in God. And openly, that's our first role. Our second role is to find the love of our life. And that sometimes takes patience, time, understanding, forgiveness, and real results come only when we let go of everything and let it all go to God. When I'm talking like this, I'm talking about real experience. I'm talking about having loved someone for a really long time, having cared for that person, having felt like we could grow old together, but we were never quite fully equally yoked. And that was hard. It's hard to say. It's hard if my son would hear it, but openly that's okay. She moved on, she's moved to somewhere else, and she openly is nowhere near my life. And that's something I'm okay with, I guess. You see, when a person loves, they always love. They love forever. And they expect to love forever. That's sort of what we plan to do. That's how God puts love in our lives. And when we meet that special someone who just changed their life, who lights us up like a holiday ornament, and literally knows how to say things, knows how to do things that just make us delight in God's presence in that person, we don't know what else to say other than we love them. And that's all we feel. No matter the ups, the downs, the ins, the outs of life, the difficulties in communications, the challenges, the silliness of putting emotional drama into something that's so simple, love. When we love someone, that's all it means. We love them. It doesn't mean that it's implying anything other than we love them. And I've said this many times to the person that I care for. I said, okay, when you're done seething in rage, when you're done giving me difficulties, when you're done doing your drama, when you're done with all that, let me know. Because I'm going to sit in here and wait here because, simply, I love you. And when I say that, I mean it. If I don't mean it, I don't say it. And openly, that's how a man like me functions. There are other men who think that I don't have the right to love. You see, I already produced several videos on love, and those have been deleted out of my YouTube channel. 
I've also produced other videos that someone is maliciously and monstrously going into and editing, cutting my words, changing what I've said. And for a pastor who's a personal friend of mine who openly listens to my stuff and tells me that what it was there originally is no longer there now. And when I'm writing things, I know what I'm writing. And when I listen and it doesn't match the words on the page, it says that someone is monkeying around illegally. You see, we have a lot of people who haven't understood the laws of the land. They've not understood international human rights declarations that our country participates in and we are expected to follow as American citizens. They also haven't understood the love of God in regard to how this country was formed, why it was formed, and why people came here in the first place it was for the love of God, to be able to pray, to be able to worship, to be able to do it in any way, shape, or form that we so choose. There's always a faith group that says that their way is better than someone else's, and that's not true. There are certainly faiths around the globe that the Lord produced. There's a few that are not produced by Him, but only people with gifts of spirit and gifts of soul might know that. Also, it's an opinion sometimes rendered, but sometimes we have to look at what are they spewing, what are they sharing, what are they preaching, what are they teaching, and literally, what are their prophetic gifts. You see, I might know things about someone's soul because I'm told it. You might know something about someone else, but are you told it, or do you just impress upon yourself that you think it? There's a difference. Do you know the difference? And who's teaching you those differences? If in your church there's someone who has gifts of the Spirit and they're sharing that wisdom with you, wonderful. If it's proven true, great. If it hasn't, then sorry, it's not a gift of the Spirit. There's a lot of people in the metaphysical community who pretend to be something they're not. They just like drawing cards. They just like doing <coughs> stones. They just like doing runes. They just like doing a lot of those tools that are about celebrating God's love with people in different ways from different cultures around the globe, different historic things from the Druidism times to the nomads to native works to all sorts of things. And there's always some monster who thinks they have the right to monkey around in that, to define it as something ill-willed or define it as something satanic or define it as something immoral. And the reality is they're not God. They don't have the right to say that. And a man produced it because the Lord impressed upon them to produce it. There are people who have studied these arts, there are people who produce the spirit, there are people who know these things, and people as beautiful as Esther Hicks and her late husband Jerry Hicks did wonderful jobs to teach people about God without knowing what to do. So in life we have moments of time to make a recording, and I'm trying that right now. So thanks for listening, I hope you're having a great spiritual, spiritually uplifting day. This is Blake Anson of Blaze Communications, LLC, talking about the magic and mayhem of God, but mainly about love and how to just stay steadfast in our love of other people.